I am David, your developer on Duty, and in this video we're gonna look at Helix, a postmodern text editor. Helix is a text editor which runs in your terminal. It very much feels like Vim because of modal editing capabilities, but it also has a lot of inspiration from the Cocoon text editor. Its design is built around multiple selections. That feels pretty natural. We'll come to that later in this video. It's supposed to be a bit simpler and more beginner friendly than Vim. Similar to NeoVim, syntax highlighting is done by parsing the code using TreeSitter. This is just great because now the structure of your code is known to Helix, allowing higher level features like selection of syntax nodes. Also similar to NeoVim, it has built-in language server support. So in principle, all those language features like go to definition and so on you used to have in let's say VS Code are also possible in Helix. Of course, it runs in a terminal, though an alternative frontend is planned. But honestly, I really like terminal-based apps. It's just so consistent if all your apps have the same font. And one of my personal highlights, it's built with Rust, a very efficient language pretty much on par with C or C++. It's really fast and not bloated at all. You will see that once we try it out. The installation is very simple. You just use the package manager of your operating system and run the respective commands. You can also build it from source. Once done, you can also fetch the latest TreeSitter grammars. Now let's try it out. I already installed it and I'm using a fresh installation. No additional configuration is done on my side. You can open it up using the command hx and see how fast it opens. It's instantaneous. Similar to Vim, to write something you need to go into insert mode. You'll quickly feel that it feels very much like Vim. Let's press I and edit some text. Now to go back to normal mode, you hit escape. Since it's so similar to Vim, I'm not gonna give a full tutorial on how to edit text and manipulate text and instead rather focus on the differences. For example, if you hit B, you go back a word, just like in Vim, but you'll notice that the word is automatically highlighted. That is because Helix follows the object-verb methodology instead of Vim's verb-object. Let's remove this selection with a semicolon. For example, in Vim, to delete an object, you would hit D for delete and then the object, W, the word. In Helix, inspired by Cocoon, you hit w the word so let's do this and now you can see that it's selected and then you hit d for delete we can undo this operation by hitting u first selecting things and then operating on them is very consistent in helix another example let's say we want to copy and paste the line 10 times yy as in vim doesn't work here instead you might have guessed it we need to select it first and then copy it. So we press X to select the line and then copy it into our default register using Y. And now similar to Vim, we write 10P and paste it 10 times. Another example, and that will also illustrate the feature of multiple selections. To search and replace across the whole file, first, again, we need to select it by pressing the percentage. Then we can hit S to search and you can see the prompt at the bottom. Here we can enter any regular expression to search for the word we want to select. In this case, for example, h.llo. Now if you press enter, you will see that all those words are highlighted and selected. And not only that, you also have multiple cursors. They're all in this line here. And now it becomes quite powerful because now you can use those multiple cursors to manipulate your text. For example, you can press E to move one word forward or B to move one word back. And now you can change these occurrences by pressing C and writing the text. Welcome. Now we hit escape to go back into normal mode and press comma to remove those multiple cursors. Let's open a JavaScript file. You can use commands as in BIM and you also get great value helps. So for example, let's open the file as a vertical split. We type, as in Vim, colon vs, and you can see you even get some kind of help description. We press space, and now the file, we can use code completion 
to open it. You can see it's highlighted beautifully. The default theme is kind of purple, reminds me of Ubuntu, but I actually kind of like it. For sure, it looks a lot better than the default Vim or NeoVim color scheme. It's very clean. But of course, there are also other color schemes available, also built in, and they look really great. More on that later when we see how to configure Helix. One thing to notice in general is that you always get those nice little helper windows for the respective modes. For example, if I press G to go to the go to mode, you will see all available commands. For example, to go to the end of the file, I can just press E. This is really great to discover what's out there and really helps beginners. Let's have a look at the language server protocol integration. It just works by default, which is awesome. You don't need to install any plugins or configure any key maps. It's all there and ready to be used. So let's, for example, hit G and you can see we have the letter D to go to the definition. So let's hit D. And you can see it jumped up to the definition of this function as expected. We also get code completion out of the box. For example, we can write console.l and you can see there is console.log. And we can select it and we can say yeah and again all without plugins you also might have noticed that the correct identification was applied and that the ending quotation mark and closing bracket was inserted automatically neat we can also use code actions for example we can go to this function here we can press space and now you can see when i press a it will perform this code action here so i press a and now i convert it to an anonymous function just like that. You can also see the documentation of things. For example, for this log function here, I can press space K and now I can see the documentation. We can also rename things, for example, here space and you can see press R to rename a symbol. I press R, the new name should be foo. I press enter and it's renamed. So let's close the left window. I can press control W to go into window mode. I press H to go to the left. I press call on Q to quit that and that that's how I close it. There's also the possibility to open files using a fuzzy finder similar to FCF or telescope. You press space F to find files and then you can just write the name you want to have and you can find it. There's only one downside. The syntax highlighting is only enabled once you open that file. So if I open this and I press space F again, now you can also see syntax highlighting for both files. And similarly, you can grab for stuff using space slash. And here I can search for foo, for example, and now I get my results. Let's have a look at the built-in themes real quick. You can write colon theme space, and now you can get all those uh, default color themes. I, for example, like very much one dark, and you can see it just works. It's very clean. If you want to set it permanently, you can write it in the configuration file. For this, we can just write config open, which opens the config.toml file. And here we can just write theme equals to one dark, save it, and that's it. And the next time we open Helix, it has the correct theme. There are many options available. For example, we can also, for our editor block, set the line number to relative. So let's see how, how that would look like. Let's restart it. And now we have relative line numbers. Other configuration options are described on the website and it also tells you how to redefine your key bindings. There's also native support for the debug adapter protocol to debug your application. You need to create a file called languages toml. So let's just open a file config helix languages.toml. Now here I paste the debug configuration for JavaScript. So you need to provide the command node to the location of your node debug JavaScript file, which you need to debug your application. Now, once this is configured, you can go to your application. You can hit space D to go into the debug mode, which is experimental and at the moment also a bit buggy. And you can press B to toggle a breakpoint. And now you can launch your debug target by pressing L, provide the name of your file, test.js in this case. And now you stopped at this breakpoint. 
You can, for example, list all the variables by hitting V. And you can continue pressing C. And you can see down there that it printed yeah from this line. All in all, it's really a great editor with lots of potential. Compared to NeoVim, so many things work out of the box without any external plugins, custom key mappings and so on. It feels really clean and is easy to use. One of the downsides is that at the moment there's no support for custom plugins, but it's being worked on and in the future you might have the possibility to write your plugins in any language and compile it to WebAssembly, which is then run by a runtime, for example WASM time, in an isolated way. That's gonna be great. Also keep in mind that the community is a lot smaller compared to Vim, NeoVim, etc. But let's all hope this will change. Personally, I can't yet make the switch from NeoVim because I still need better support for the debug adapter protocol and I can't live without a plugin system, but I'm excited about the future of Helix and I hope it will become a vibrant community. Right now, they're on a great path. Please tell me in the comments what you think of Helix. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.